So in this video, I'm first going to give a brief overview of Zidane's managerial career. I'm then going to analyse him from a tactical point of view before looking at his managerial attributes. In the second part to this video, which will be linked in the description below, I'll be analysing how Zidane would set up this Manchester United side and three potential signings he could look to make come the summer. But before that, for cheap good quality football jerseys, retro jerseys and tracksuits, go over to www.jerseyfever.com, a link will be left in the description, and use code ALANTISFOOTBALL for 5% off. So after a year and a half of managing Real Madrid's B team, Real Madrid Castilla, Zinedine Zidane was appointed Real Madrid first team manager, replacing Rafa Benitez in January 2016. Now when Benitez was sacked, Real Madrid weren't actually that far off the pace, being only four points behind Atletico Madrid in first, as Los Blancos sat in third place. But Zidane drastically improved Real Madrid and La Liga, winning 17 games, drawing two and losing just one of the 20 games he had left of that season. Finishing just behind Barcelona in second place by the end of the season, but if you took the league table from when Zidane took over, Real Madrid would have finished one point ahead of Barcelona, which is an impressive feat. But it was in the Champions League where Real Madrid impressed most that season, beating Roma in the round of 16, Wolfsburg in the quarter-final and Manchester City in the semi-final, before beating Atletico Madrid on penalties in the final to win Real Madrid another Champions League title. Now it is hard to say Madrid weren't fortunate this season to win the Champions League, but you have to give Zidane credit not just for his impact in Europe, but also his impact domestically. The season after in 2016-2017 was probably Zidane's best year as Real Madrid manager. They won La Liga with 93 points, three ahead of Barcelona in second place with 29 wins, 6 draws and just 3 losses. In the Champions League they beat Napoli in a round of 16, Bayern Munich in the quarter-final, Atletico Madrid in the semi-final and then Juventus in the final. In Zidane's final season of his first tenure at Real Madrid they did drop off domestically significantly, finishing in 3rd place with just 76 points with 22 wins, 10 draws and 6 losses but in the Champions League they won a 3rd title in a row which still to this day is unprecedented. And this season was probably their hardest run to the final. They beat PSG in the round of 16, Juventus in the quarterfinals, Bayern Munich in the semi-finals and Liverpool in the final. Zidane left Real Madrid that summer and when Julian Lopetegui took over it became clear that without Zidane Real Madrid were a completely different side. With Lopetegui getting sacked midway through the season and Real Madrid finishing 19 points behind Barcelona in first as they sat in third place with 68 points. And unlike their previous season under Zidane, they weren't able to make up for their poor domestic form by a good run in Europe as they got knocked out in the round of 16 to Ajax, proving to everyone that maybe Zidane had been underrated during his first tenure at Real Madrid. So much so that in the summer of 2019, at the end of that season, Zidane would return and the next season Real Madrid would win the title with 87 points, 5 ahead of 2nd place with 26 wins, 9 draws and 3 losses, though they did get knocked out in a round of 16, though it was to Manchester City, who were arguably the best side in Europe at that current time. However, last season in 2020-2021, it became clear that maybe this Real Madrid squad was declining with age, though Zidane still managed to get to the Champions League semi-finals, though they would get knocked out by Chelsea there, and they did finish second to Atletico Madrid, just two points off the title. So if you look at Zidane's career right now, it's probably only Pep Guardiola in the world of football management who can compete with the amount of trophies he's won in the last decade. And remember, Zidane has only been in management for four and a half years. From a tactical point of view, many criticise Dan saying he doesn't have a clear defined philosophy. However, I would say this is one of his biggest attributes as a manager as it gives him the tactical flexibility to change offensive and defensive systems not just between matches but also during games. However, despite this, throughout Zidane's managerial career, there have been recurring themes throughout different systems that he has played. When Zidane took over at Real Madrid, he initially started using a 4-3-3 system which would move to a 2-5-3 in possession and then to a 2-3-5 when Madrid progressed the ball into the middle and final thirds with the fullbacks being given the license to push further forward providing the width in the system, with the midfield three of Casemiro and Tony Cruz and Modric either side, sitting deep in possession to provide the defensive security behind the fullbacks. This was a clear example of Zidane being able to adjust his system to get the best out of his key players. Tony Cruz and Luka Modric were arguably the two best central midfielders in the world at being able to dictate play, playing progressive passes and moving the ball forward into the middle and final thirds. So instead of having them push forward and being easily marked by the opposition, what Zidane did is he thought if we have Cruz and Modric drop into these wide kind of quarterback positions, we can feed the ball into them, the fullbacks can push forward, dragging the opposition's wide players higher up the pitch. They now have 
have more space and that way we can get these two on the ball a lot more often in space and this really aided Real Madrid's progression of play. With the fullbacks pushing forward and providing the width even in the middle and attacking thirds, this gave Real Madrid the outlets on the flanks, enabling them to work the ball into wide positions and put crosses into the box, which got the best out of Ronaldo's aerial ability, which is something that Manchester United currently aren't doing. Zidane's versatility would also extend to player positioning when in possession. Sometimes we would see Modric and Cruz dropping into these deep quarterback positions, with Casemiro pushing higher up the pitch. Other times we would see Casemiro being the player to hold a deeper position alongside Cruz, with Modric pushing up between the lines and looking to make runs in between the centre-back and full-backs, and this would often be done if Zidane thought the opposition side had a tendency of overexposing their centre-backs with their full-backs pushing out wide, creating the space between the full-back and centre-back for Real Madrid to then exploit. Obviously with players like Ronaldo and Gareth Bale and Toni Kroos and Luka Modric in the side, a lot of Zidane's successes are going to be put down to individual brilliance, but as a manager you've got to know how to maximise each player's individual attributes without taking away from the whole side, and Zidane was a master at doing this. Throughout his first season he was using a front three of Ronaldo, Benzema and Bale, with Bale holding a lot wider than Isco would in the 2016-2017 season. What Zidane did is because Bale was constantly in and out of the sides with injury, instead of bringing someone in like Asensio or Isco and asking them to do the same job as Gareth Bale, he tailored the system to fit their attributes and so Isco played at the top of a diamond almost, playing a more central role with Ronaldo and Benzema ahead of him and this not only got the best out of Ronaldo and Benzema but also the best out of Isco. Isco. If you look back at when Isco was at his best, it was in the 2016-2017 season. And this mostly comes down to how Zidane used him. Now whilst defensively managers can rely on individual brilliance to bail them out in certain situations, defensively it all comes down to positional organisation and setting up in a way that nullifies the opposition's offensive strengths. Out of possession Zidane's 4-3-3 would fall into either a 4-5-1 or a 4-4-2 shape in the middle third. And in the opposition's build-up phase, Zidane wasn't married to one certain style of pressing play. Instead he would alternate between a more passive 4-4-2 or 4-3-3 and allow the opposition to come forward with the ball, instead instructing his central midfielders to retain their deeper positions to cut off the space between the Real Madrid defensive and midfield line. But other times we would see him instruct the two central midfielders wide of Casemiro, Cruz and Modric to push high up the pitch onto the opposition's central midfielders if Real Madrid were looking to press it in a man-to-man -man oriented style, and this would obviously be done to stop the opposition playing out of their defensive third. And this is quite unusual for a top level manager, even the likes of Jurgen Klopp, Pep Guardiola, and even Thomas Tuchel to a degree, tend to stick to the same style of pressing whoever they play, maybe tinkering it a bit with certain player positioning, but ultimately if they are going to press high, they seem to do it in the majority of their games, whereas Sidan has the ability to be tactically flexible, look at the opposition and decide whether he side need a more passive style of play to bring the opposition higher up the pitch and stop as much space developing between the lines as possible, or to press aggressively from the front, pin the opposition in and stop them being able to play out from the back. And this versatility, as I said, doesn't just happen between matches. We've seen Zidane do this in-game as well, and this is why Real Madrid had so much success, particularly between 2016 and 2018, because Zidane had the ability to change things during a game. So even if he didn't set out the side particularly well at the start of the game and Real Madrid were getting dominated, which did happen in a lot of games, Zidane would make the tactical change early, and this is why I think he's one of the best knockout managers in world football right now. If you're unsure what I mean by knockout manager, I did explain the concept between a a knockout manager and a league manager in my video looking at how Antonio Conte would set up Manchester United and whether he'd be a good choice as manager. So if you want me to explain those terms in greater detail, check the video in the description below. So what Zidane lacks in a tactical philosophy, he certainly makes up for in his man management ability. During Carlo Ancelotti's first tenure at Real Madrid, Zidane was his assistant and you can see the influence that Ancelotti had on Zidane. Ancelotti was known for being a calming presence and being able to get the best out of a team of elite players, which he showcased not just at Real Madrid, but at AC Milan and Chelsea before that. Zidane showcased his man management ability throughout his Real Madrid tenures, and if you look at the managers before and after Zidane, you can see the effect that Zidane had on that dressing room, as Rafa Benitez and Julian Lopetegui could not get the best out of this squad despite being excellent managers, which really showed that when it comes to managing an elite team, you do need a special type of personality to get the best out of players, and that is not simply just 
about how good a tactician the manager is. The only player who Zidane really clashed with at Real Madrid was Gareth Bale and when he played, Zidane still was able to get the best out of him. If you look at the big personalities in that Real Madrid dressing room such as Sergio Ramos, Cristiano Ronaldo, Karim Benzema, Tony Cruz, etc, you can see how easy it can be for players to start to splinter off into their own separate groups if the manager doesn't have full reign and control over the dressing room and even managers such as Jose Mourinho and Antonio Conte have struggled with this. Now unlike a manager like Antonio Conte or Jose Mourinho, Zidane doesn't demand transfers immediately when he comes into the side. If you look at that Real Madrid side, he really didn't have a big name transfer throughout the three years when he was winning back-to-back -back Champions Leagues. It was only in 2019 when Real Madrid spent big and brought in the likes of Eden Hazard and Furlong Mendy, where Zidane really was able to use his full muscle in the transfer window, but other than that he seems to be able to work with what he's got. So that will certainly be a positive if Zidane were to come into this Manchester United squad, as it shows he can work with what he's got and he's not going to demand a complete transfer revamp which could take two to three years so theoretically it's going to take Zidane less time to mold the side into what he wants whereas with managers like Antonio Conte or Jose Mourinho it does take a lot of upheaval and sometimes it takes two to three years before the manager gets the actual system and players that he wants. Now this could obviously be a positive or a negative for Manchester United and I'll come on to that in the second part of this video which will be linked in the description below where I analyse how Zidane would set up this Manchester United side and the free summer transfers he could look to make. So if you enjoyed the video be sure to check out the second part in the description, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and click notifications so you get notified when my videos come out and follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more content as well.